starting the long, cold commute to work. And we have arrived. We got some mighty fine heifers in here. So we got two pairs out here, two pairs in here. They're ready to go today. And then we got four more right there. Eight pairs in the barn, it's getting pretty full. We'll get some moved out. Hay grinder's coming in about 30 minutes, so we wanna get some feeding done before he comes. We have a pretty good day ahead of us. Thanks for clicking on this video. Hope you enjoy it. After dad's done with the hay grinder, we gotta feed these girls a bale. Oh, my camera needs to focus a little bit. They're out of hay back there. There's a couple pairs in here that we're gonna move out. Butterscotch. Hmm. Ellie, butterscotch. Look at it. If you come here and check out the bulls to heifer list, it's it's three to one. We got fifteen heifers, five bulls. This kind of happened last year. I don't know if it was to this extent, but the bulls ended ended up coming back and actually being more than the heifers I think but for some reason we get more heifers right away at least we did last year and we are this year I assume it'll catch back up so not too worried about it we quite often get asked how we do our numbering system on the left we have a bull tag here on the right we have a heifer calf tag I can tell this because over here we got letters on top over here we have numbers on top when it comes to a bull we care about who its daddy is because we sell bulls and our customers want to know you know it was this uh calving ease bull or was this more of a cow bull the top letters are its dad the bottom numbers are its mom's number so we know who belongs to who whereas the heifer tag the top number is its mom's number that way we know who belongs to who. it has its own unique number on the bottom the two stands for 2022 so last year is 2021 so the first number was a one and then these last two numbers is kind of a running total of how many heifers we have so this calf in particular was born in 2022 and it was the 14th heifer and so it's got its own unique number on the bottom it's got its mom's number on top see if you look at her tag her tag is 015 and it's going to be the bottom number for this calf since it's a bull Yep, go get some water. Hey, Hello. Hello. How'd that go for you? They herded like cats. Yeah. Oh, your belly 
always. Good morning. Did I ever tell you about the time that I took some big sows back when I had hogs to town? And I opened Not up a the, nice name for the local girls. I opened up the back trailer gate and I walked in there to chase them out. And they came side by side by side. There was like four or five of them, big sows. And they came all at once. And they didn't split up or anything. And I got up against the rail and they just rolled me. All my knees hurt. And that's why you inherited bad knees. That's how genetic works. Because mine are fine. <laughs> Hello. So my song of the day is a Led Zeppelin song, but I've never been a huge fan of the song Stairway to Heaven until uh, I watched the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction for Led Zeppelin and Ann and Nancy Wilson did the song and it starts off kind of slow, but they keep adding more and more till they end up with a whole orchestra playing and uh, it's quite a tribute to a band of four that it took all those to make a similar sound. It was pretty awesome. Watch it all the way to the end. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction for Led Zeppelin by Ann and Nancy Wilson. That's all I got to say about that. Oh. Boneless chicken. Yeah, got no bone today. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta drink yeah. that milk. Yeah. Dad took off just a second ago. He's going to grab some wire for Storla Station. So he'll be gone a couple hours. So it's my ship. I just, when I was back there, I saw a heifer eating on that bale. Really big bag. I feel like she'll be calving later today. And also we got a really fun, this is one of the coolest welding projects that I've ever done. And we're gonna be working on that some today. Thirty-three foot's a little too long. I'm gonna cut it in half. Might waste. Might end up wasting a little, but that's pretty hard to deal with. Plus, I can't shut the door, and I'm letting heat out. Oh my lanta! I started out, had the cord plugged into this which just runs the outlets on the wall, nothing plugged into any of them. So then I was like, well, that breaker keeps popping, so I ran an extension cord, which is not advantageous. It's kind of counterproductive, but put it in right here, and it worked better, so I guess we're gonna run like that. So frustrating, I don't know what the deal is. This is what we're working on, and what it's gonna end up being is a wire winder, but it's gonna be pretty dang fancy one. So what it's gonna look like, these big circles right here, there's gonna be one right here and one right here. And it's gonna be rolling this way, winding up wire, old barbed wire or woven wire. And then when you're ready to dump it, there's gonna be hydraulic cylinders there. And these two sides, I gotta build the other one, that's what we're doing now, will slide out. And then that roll of wire is gonna drop out the bottom. You slide these back in and get winding again, it's gonna be awesome. So we got the one side done. We're just gonna build the other side now and uh, kinda keep rolling with it, see how much we can get done today. Obviously if you look at this, you're like, that's gonna kinda be a 
tough gap to weld. So what we do is I set that chop saw at a 45 degree angle and I cut right here and right here. And that's gonna be how I saddle it, turn it a little bit and it'll fit right in there and it'll be awesome. And look a little something like that. Nobody's cabin outside, not much going on. We got quite a few in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's quite a few. This is kind of the moment of truth. If this slides in and out, that's pretty much the biggest thing I was worried about in this whole project. Hopefully this just moves freely. <laughs> That ain't bad. Especially once I grease the crap out of it. See, right away I thought I was SOL. Like, this one was not sliding. I greased the living crap out of it. You can see there's grease all over. And now this thing moves pretty amazingly. So, I think I got it. I think we did good. Let's weld her up solid. So you remember how well that was sliding a little bit ago? Now it don't go. So we're going to start lubing. Everything's welded solid, so I'm sure something tweaked a little bit, moved a little bit. So we're going to start lubing everything because it is pretty dang solid. But I remember back to a couple days ago when I did this side. I did have to use this big sledgehammer to get it going. I'm not too worried anymore. There we go. Just don't want to pop it out all the way. You see, if I can do that with my hands, there's going to be a hydraulic cylinder in there at some point, so it's going to have no problem. It's just going to keep wearing until it digs it out enough that it's not hard to move back and forth anymore. Why am I out of breath? That'll get it going. And then at some point, I'm sure someone already commented it, we'll drill a hole, probably just one right in the middle, put a grease circ in there, and grease the living heck out of it over and over until every time you run it, it's like raining grease. Well, I think my head just, that grease up there, I think my head just touched that top one. as good as the other one but it'll do it's about one o'clock check on the heifers run in grab some lunch but the little guy thinks that sun feels good so this thing's starting to get kind of heavy now next thing i want to do i got this mount we'll get the skid loader in here we'll mount that up get it up close and weld it on and we'll be done with this project for the day That should be pretty good. I'm just gonna tack it and then move the skid loader. 
That way I can get the rest of it. It's looking pretty sweet though. We got some really nice surfaces we can weld and it's gonna be fun. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. There's grease everywhere. Who did that? I guess nothing's calving out here, but that girl is standing on that one's tail. How rude. She don't act too worried about it though. Dad got back. He got these two pallets of barbed wire. Look at the squat on that thing. Saves a lot of gas mileage when you don't have to pull a trailer though. So how was your trip with the 5,000 pounds of barbed wire on the pickup? It was fine. A little wobbly? No, not when I'm going straight. It wasn't too bad. Okay. Yeah. Finishing out the day, we're over at Jeff's place and we got some cattle to run through. This is Jeff's wife. Is this your first time on camera? I think so. And their hey. beloved dog, Charlie. <laughs> the <Charlie>. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's getting the cattle up and we're just gonna pour them quick and there's I think one in there that's maybe got an ear drooping that we're gonna got, give a... Got two that have a yellow tag on one side. So we're just gonna run through quick and it'll be pretty fast. Ran about 60 through, just poured them. There was one that we needed to give a shot. Real quick thing, not too big of a deal. I could use some chapstick really bad or really good. I, I really need some chapstick. Excuse me. What the? It came out of the bail. Looks like we bailed up a fox last fall. Yikes. What's up? Trying to steer it. They don't come with a steering wheel? That'd be nice. A handle. You just prop it on there and steer. <laughs> I can't believe none of these cab today. Well, there was a day, no new claves, but we did some welding and Dad got some barbed wire for Storeless Station. So, there it is. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. My nose is running. What you got there? Health food. Health food from Bev? Yep. You know it's good then. I'm putting gear there. Yeah, that might help. Okay, okay there we go. Yeah.